offices. This is where the front end manager would be, the assistant GM, and all of the rooms division director of operations staff would be. So some of the things that we discuss on the front end is the guest pre-arrival. So part of the front end would be rooms reservation. We discussed the other day that there are many ways with modern computers and technology that people can book or reserve a room. There are many different platforms that can be used through social media, which are managed by the revenue manager. And the revenue manager, we said, is either on property or they could even be on a call center where they do management for more than one property for a chain of uh, hotel properties. So that's pre-arrival. Arrival is when the guests uh, check in and they meet the front desk administrator. Many times arrival now with the software and the frequent traveler programs, a guest can log in through their phone app. I'm a frequent traveler with Marriott and Hilton, so I can book my room, reserve it, and actually get my room key through my app. And the room key is through your Android or your iPhone through Apple. And you simply, it's, uh, it's a green swipe card that you swipe on the electronic device that's on your room. So once the guest arrives, they check into the room and the modern technology with all the software, the uh, television is already preset welcoming the guest, stating their name. And as I said the other day during lecture, many times it has all of your shows programmed, Netflix, uh, Prime, uh, Hulu, you're already programmed to your particular stations and your app. And so part of all this is part of the guest stay and then departure would be checkout. Again, you can either go down to the front desk, check out, turn in your key, or through the modern apps, you simply check out through your phone. And this is a convenient service uh, to many people. So the front office guest cycle has really changed dramatically over the last seven to 10 years. So guests choose their hotel. We choose a hotel based on uh, previous discussions of the type of hotel, travel, which would be going down a highway on a destination, or it could be for a convention or conference, so a long-term stay. It could be for a family, family vacation. It could be a vacation rental, timeshare, Airbnb, or a vacation by rental which Marriott and Hilton both manage now. And it also could be uh, a business travel, saying in a city, inner city hotel, uh, with all the convenience and amenity that a business travel would want. And here in Palm Beach County, we said it would be for travel and tourism, for our family vacations, destination travel. Uh, and these hotels were based on the frequency of travel and their reputation. So the guest cycle, when it talks of what is the guest cycle, the guest cycle is reserving, booking the room, or registering the room. And during the cycle, the guest develops a relationship with the front office person. They'll get to know that person more than they would anyone else. Because if we need maintenance or engineering, we call the front desk. If we need clean linen or additional or extra linen or special guest services, we always reach out to the front desk. In world-class resorts, they'll have a concierge, bell person, house person, or someone that would be available to the front desk administration to assist in that. Uh, if we do have guests walk in, the guests walk in, what that means is the guest does not have a reservation. They're walking in to book a room, uh, use identity and a method of payment, uh, credit card, uh, to check into the room and stay for a certain period of time. Guests will always present their identification. We check their ID with their credit card. They have to match. We also check ID. And some of the case studies that you see in the videos, you see improper methods of how the front office person checks the guest ID when a guest loses their key card or when a guest is checking in, instead of just writing the room number down without announcing it, in many situations, front office person loudly announced the guest room, which is an inappropriate method of checking someone in because they could be identified by people in the surrounding area. And this is how 
um, fraud or incidents happen in a particular hotel environment. So the front desk agents have to be sensitive to the accessibility when checking the guests in. Uh, if there are uh, American Disability Act requirements by the guest, all hotels have to have to have, have to have special designated rooms that are assigned to the guest that they could check out, larger bathroom areas, wheelchair access to the showers, wider entrance areas, um, methods of gaining access to the room that a traditional guest who does not need these uh, uh, ADA compliances would not require. So registration is complete when a guest has uh, established a method of payment and then it is uh, put to their folio. The folio is the guest contract where all amenities from restaurants, bar, or anything, the uh, gift shops that the hotel has available where payment will be posted or billing will be accrued where the guests will have to pay upon checkout or elite departure. This is all known as the guest cycle. Okay, so occupancy, uh, room is vacant and ready. Uh, these are some of the key terms that you want to know. If a room is out of order, that means it's taken out of inventory, which means that maintenance and engineering are working on that room. A room lockout means that someone cannot gain key access to that room. Be familiar with check-in, check-out. A late check-in and check-out uh, means that a guest has a late arrival. They could be flying in by plane in a late plane, and they want to make sure that the room is not sold or the hotel doesn't oversell that room, knowing that the guest is going to be there. Uh, in the earlier years, it was our goal as a hotel operator to oversell the rooms by a certain percentage, knowing that we would have no show. But today in modern society with the social media and automatic pay through frequent traveler apps, it's a little bit more difficult to manage. But through these frequent traveler apps, a guest can put their travel requirements, meaning they will check in early or check out late. And you can actually put down uh, in-room service if you want certain placements in your room before arriving. Sleeper just means someone that's gonna sleep in late. They usually put a sign on the door. Skipper means that someone's a no-show. They didn't show up to book the room. Um, so these are some of the terminologies that you would study and learn that would be on your midterm in your final exam. And then when we do the room revenue, you need to know the terminology. Single occupancy means one person. Double means that two people. A double double means two double beds, usually two queen. A studio is a small suite. Uh, a mini or a junior suite is a little bit larger, meaning it has a living room suite. Then you have your queen, your king, and twin rooms. Not many hotels have twin rooms anymore. Uh, unless they're family travel, like on Disney properties, where they would have an adjoining twin room with bunk beds for children. Adjacent rooms, those are rooms that can be booked together, and they have the room in the middle with the door lock and key that can be opened if you have a large family or a family member that has special needs that you need to be uh, near you. And that's what they mean by adjoining rooms. Adjacent rooms are room next door. Connecting rooms are two rooms that are together. And there are many different size suites today because of long-term stay properties and um, guests that want to have more like a business travel living room suite where they could have meetings. Uh, and some, some of these suites are have adjoining or attached rooms that are attached to conference rooms. And the conference room is booked out by a corporation and there are rooms on each side that the company can use for the executives while they have meetings there on property. You'll notice this in many hotels. If any of you travel and you travel to the Philadelphia airport, you notice the Marriott Hotel is actually part of the Philadelphia airport. And the reason why it was designed this way is so that business travels, travelers could fly in, have meetings and fly out. And of course, this is before we became very popular with uh, Zoom and um, Skype and all of these type of conference calling uh, platforms that we use today. The occupancy stage of the cycle, the guest uh, coordinates their services with the front desk, as we said. Um, guest complaints are resolved through front desk. The front desk will 
call the appropriate department head or director if they need assistance in taking care of the guest complaint. Uh, earlier in one of our lectures, we discussed that a manager on duty, MOD, is always on property, AM, mid, and PM shift. That means that if a front desk administrator cannot get in charge with the department head and the department head is not on property to resolve an issue, they'll call the manager on duty and then the manager on duty will take initiative to correct that problem. Some cases it might be going to housekeeping and getting additional linen. It could be getting iron, an ironing board. It could be getting extra sundries, um, shower or bath, uh, uh, things that uh, guests would require. Or it could be that you might have to change a guest room. The room is uh, out of order or it has um, maintenance issues and that guest has to be changed or into a different room and there may not be a room available. So you have to meet with the manager on duty to correct this situation. This is all part of the guest cycle while they're staying on property. The final stage of guest cycle is uh, accounting. This means that the guest has to reconcile their folio before they leave the property. They would have a credit card on file or they would have a, a payment method through iPhone or Android, which could go directly to the frequent travelers uh, web payment method. So the folio has to be rectified before they leave the property. And this is the final stage of the guest cycle, checking out. With the modern software and technology, you do not have to go to the front desk and check out anymore. You can check out through your television or your app on your frequent traveler uh, on your phone. So Bonvoy is what Marriott use and then Hilton has their own app. I simply click on the app and I go in and I'll say, um, here is your travel, check me out, date, time, or give me the city and the property that I'm staying in. And then it reconciles to my credit card and then I automatically get emailed a receipt of my stay and I can do that while I'm leaving the property, while I'm on the property or driving on my way off the property. Once the guest checks out, the front office will automatically go to the guest folio and it's reconciled by the night auditor, as we said in one of our previous class talks. And then accounting will account and uh, post this to the appropriate budget line item, front office or rooms division revenue sales, so that the department director on a daily basis can review their revenue and their expenses to make sure that they are on point with budget. <clears throat> um, so automated systems have been uh, updated. We call this the PMS, Property Management System. There are many different types of PMS systems. Most PMS systems will include everything we discussed as reservations. Uh, we said that there are no PBX phone operating systems anymore. Most hotels used to have an operator who would take the calls from the room and plug into the different department or director that they would need to talk with. But most phones today are only used in the room for emergency purposes. Everyone uses their cell phone. It used to be part of your folio. You were automatically charged a phone rate. If you stayed in an inner city, Philadelphia, Boston, Miami, Orlando, you were automatically billed a phone charge on your phone. You'll notice today that that no longer uh, uh, happens. Okay, so uh, when you work for a company, you will be trained under their reservation systems and it's part of the property management system. Most companies use uh, an IBM software system that works with the uh, hardware system. Uh, there are different pieces of that software system that each person would use, front desk, reservations, the back office, your um, revenue manager, and even some of your accounting people will have different systems, part of the property management system. Okay, we talked about the guest arrival. We discussed online payment methods. Um, data is uh, considered to be private, uh, private property. You don't share this data. One of the biggest th concerns that we discuss in security and safety management is hacking. Just like many major corporations that are getting hacked today and some of the accounting systems at colleges and universities, hotel, hotel properties are being hacked. Their reservation systems and their accounting systems. 
So identity theft and fraud is a major issue in hotel operations. So we will discuss that a little bit further when we talk more about safety and security in hotels. Okay, the data must be secure, it must be safe, uh, must be out of sight of other guests so they can't see over the shoulder of the front desk operations person who's checking the guest in. And all um, uh, hotel interact with front office systems, point of sales, which we discussed, point of sales is the property revenue terminals and all of the outlets, restaurants, bars, convenience stores, um, gift shops, anything that has a point of sales or revenue, this is where your cashier will total up the guest's cost, post it, and it'll post to the portfolio of the guests. Even if it's paid, it'll show, it'll show where they purchased the item and how it was paid, whether it was direct billed and um, reconciled on the folio, or if it was paid by credit card, it'll still post on the folio of the guest, unless it's just a different payment method or credit card outside of the one posted on the folio at check-in. Um, so there are various workstations around the property. Now we use iPads. iPads are used all over property. Many properties, when they have large convention centers, you'll see a front desk administrator or a guest services person out front on an iPad checking guests in to a conference so they don't have to immediately go in line in the front desk. This helps to expedite the process of getting people to where they need to go. So this is part of the guest cycle stage. And most convention centers also will do the same uh, at checkout. They will either have a booth in the convention center, they'll say the name of the group, um, and it'll be representing the front office administration. So they'll have a special checkout or register for the guests to check in and check out. I used to do this in food and beverage. If a, a guest needed sundries or particular items, we would set up a C-store convenience store near the conference or the convention center with a touchpad point of sale system so the guests didn't have to go all the way to the other side of the hotel to get something they needed when they needed it in the convention center. So you can set up many of these different things, just like we would set up small little sandwich or cookie stations where guests could purchase while they were at a banquet or conference out in the hallway or a coffee station, anything that was considered a cash uh, expense that wasn't part of the conference or planned by the event planner. It's very easy and accessible to set up today with iPads that talk to the point of sales and the PMS property management system. So again, pre-arrival, reservation, files, uh, all of this is kept electronically today. There's no hard copies or no size uh, index cards in a file anywhere. Everything is electronic. Confirmation of re reservation, confirmation number. Guest folio means this is the guest master bill, which is managed by the front office and the night auditor. Uh, voucher or any charges, no longer are there any paper vouchers anymore. All transactions are posted on the guest folio at the guest guest does a room charge and you can charge anything on, on property. These large resorts now will give you a separate identity card or a separate card identifying that you are a guest on property and have access to charge on property. Some areas it might be a fob that you wear around your wrist and as you're on the property, um, that determines that that's your guest folio uh, by a number or your uh, where you work uh, or stay on property. Arrival, registration records, credit card. Uh, now we can pay by iPhone or uh, Android app. Uh, guest folio. All these are terminologies that you need to know for your midterm or your final exam. So front, front desk administration. Most functions are performed at the front desk. Guest registers, request information, service. The concierge, bellman and bellhop are all located in the front desk area. Any guest complaints, settle account, check in and check out are part of the guest cycle uh, maintained by the front office administration. Uh, they're located in a convenient area where the guests can see, usually in the lobby area where the guest walks right in. Some hotels have more than one, depending on their size. And as I said, large convention centers will have kiosks where we set up special check-in. 
if you travel to Las Vegas, you actually have check-in at the airport. If you want to stay at one of these large uh, casinos, you can go right to their special kiosk and check in and they'll have transportation. You check in, get on the transportation, they take you right to the hotel and get you right to the casino floor and get a drink in your hand and get you gambling right away. And that's part of all their business practice. Okay, so uh, the desk uh, now, the desk front desk have changed. We said in Japan now they're using self check-in kiosk like we have seen at the airport where you don't meet a guest. I have reservations about this because I feel that the customer service and the personal meet and greet still is part of hospitality and hospitality sales. But like everything else, things are changing and we have to change with those times as managers and directors. So we no longer do billing or uh, direct bill or voice call. So we all have our own cell phones now. So a lot of this is mood point. PBX systems are no longer used. Those were actually uh, where you plug in and plug out, like the old phone call areas. We used to have those in hotels. Okay. Switchboards are no longer needed or required. This is outdated information. Okay. Call accounting systems. So we used to have an accounting. On your folio, it'd show all your phone calls where you called in, called out. Long distance was charged more. Conference calls were charged more. You automatically got a charge in some of the cities for phone use, which is no longer um, done. It's not on a folio because we already have our cell phones. Guest room phones now, they're still in the room, mostly for emergencies or direct calls to the front desk. We no longer use pagers. Everyone uses cell phones. Some of your Nextel type phones are, are used in hotels for directors and operators because they have pagers and cell phone on them. A pager would be to beep one of our fellow department heads and talk directly through the phone to them. Uh, in-house phones, you'll see little phones all over that's just in-house, you can still pick up because they go to direct line to different departments. And PMS, property management system, know this acronym, acronym. There are different types of property management systems, hardware systems you purchase, and there are many different types of software. Most of them are cloud-based today, so you're not spending a lot of money on these particular type of hardware. We used to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on property management system, but now because they're cloud-based, you don't have to spend that type of money on the systems. Okay, some reservation software system we talked about, rooms management. This means that you can get a direct response now as a guest to housekeeping or to the manager on duty. Accounting management software now is used by the accounting department. It talks directly to the night auditor and to the uh, guest services at the front desk. And we have interface software that through the property management system, all software interfaces with the point of sales and with the uh, property management systems. Now Marriott uses their own particular software system. And if you work for a Marriott property, even if it's a franchise and you're a director or a department head, they'll send you to Bethesda, Maryland, where you have to go through all an intense software training and course especially if you're in sales or catering sales, they have a really intense platform that they use. Everything's automated. So the sales system now, everything has to be, all banquet event orders have to be typed into the software system. There's boxes that you check off so you can't miss or go forward. There's check off lists like in banquets. They'll ask you the type of service, if it's a buffet, if it's plated, Beverage management, it'll ask you if it's a cash bar, open bar, how long it is. You can't go through the sales process without answering questions in the software platform. And now with Bitcoin and all these new payment methods, you're going to see different methods of payment that's starting to be uh, implemented into travel worldwide. 